Hello, everyone. Greetings and welcome. It's so wonderful. It's so wonderful to see so many friends and family. And um, as you can see, I've worn my fascinator in honor of the wonderful, playful person Mary was. Um, some of you know her. We know her as Mary. Some of you call her Maria, um, Metches or uh, Mare Bear, and maybe there'll be some other names that come up as we're going through this celebration. Um, the way this came about is that Mary, before her death, had asked both Moon and I to, to plan this celebration of life. And she gave us a lot of um, content and ideas of who she wanted to speak. And I know that everyone here would have something to say. Um, everyone here would have something to say about Mary it's unfortunate that we don't all have a chance to share with the large group, um, but there is the opportunity to do the breakout rooms later. Um, I know today it is a celebration. We may have some tears, but it's just a chance for us to celebrate really the loving, adventurous woman that Mary was. Okay, so, oh, and I just, for a few people who don't know me, uh, Mary and I were partners for 12 years um, the last three years of her life, we had separated, but we still were very close and connected. Okay, so I think I'll, I'll turn it over to Moon. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. Um, my name is Moon Joyce, and um, I met Mary, I believe, in 1978. Those of you who know Mary know that she and her clothing often parted ways, and I met her at the base camp at Outward Bound, where we both worked. And uh, she was buck naked by the beach, chatting away with someone else, and uh, introduced herself, and that got the ball rolling. And I, I'm wearing this special hat in her honor today. Um, it says Lick a Chick, and it comes from a chicken restaurant in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. And Mary, of course, did her master's at um, at St. of X, and um, that restaurant actually makes more money selling hats and t-shirts now than fried chicken. So in honor of Mary and her sense of humor and her juiciness, um, I welcome you and uh, I will be co-facilitating. Um, I'm not too sure what else I need to say other than the fact that Mary and I cross paths many times over the years, living in Yellowknife, Winnipeg, Toronto, and Outward Bound together, and then went off again, somewhat peripatetically, <laughs> wandering. So um, I'm so thrilled that you're here, that you've come together. Um, I hope that, um, I hope we do Mary proud. Um, and I'm, I know that her spirit is here with us today. Uh, she gave us a lot of instructions, as is Mary's way, and uh, what she impressed upon me is that it's not so much about her, Mary, but it's about our relationships together. Mary felt very strongly that she was the person that she was because of us and the people that were related to her through all of our activities, our work, our, our love, our friendship, our activism, all of those things. And so um, she really impressed that, um, that, that we have an opportunity to, to uh, recognize that and share it. So the idea of having breakout rooms at the end, hopefully for those who can stay around and wish to, is a chance to connect again. So um, without further ado, I am going to introduce the program with a, a slideshow that is, um, it's about family. And it's a series of pictures that Mary chose of family. First, her family uh, by blood, and then um, moving into family by choice and circumstance. Um, as always, uh, Mary understood herself as a product of everyone who was a part of her life, and um, she wanted to reflect that today. And uh, just another note that the music that uh, goes with our slide presentations today are 
pieces that Mary specifically chose. So if we could have the uh, slideshow, please. Humbly we walk here, humbly we sing here, humbly we bless this ground. Humbly we walk here, humbly we sing here, humbly we bless this ground. Humbly we walk here, humbly we sing. i 
get on mute. Oh, okay. I'm back. Um, and um, I'm sorry that I'm off the camera for the moment, but maybe Susie can fix that. Um, the next piece uh, is um, a greeting that Mary um, created in the final time she had. Uh, she recorded something special for us um, and um, something to help us bridge the gap and also uh, to hear her voice one more time. Well, here we are. I'm on one side of the veil and you are on the other side of the veil that fed me, held me, comforted me, and gave me life for the 64 years I spent walking on our beautiful earth's soil forged waterways, crossed deserts, climbed mountains. How glorious that we, were all to, that we are all together. I am remembering Thich Nhat Hanh saying that the descendants of those who do not bear children are those whose lives they have been touched. I'm going to be bold enough to add that it is those who touch us in our lives that make us who we are. I cannot be myself without your laughter adventures, wisdom, and teachings. We are all connected and descendants of each other. I hold you in my heart. Our connection will never be severed. Live fully, take risks, and now more than ever, let your light shine through the darkness, for only light can prevail. See you all on the other side. I love you all so much. Mary. Okay, that was very beautiful. Um, I'd like to invite our first reader now, uh, Lori Norman, who's in Powell River, BC. And Lori was part of the dying team that supported Mary. So Lori, if you would unmute, please. I think you guys can hear me now. Yes, we can. Can you hear me okay? Okay, perfect. I, um, I just wanted to let you guys know that uh, Mary and I met just by chance and I was taking a doula course at the time and um, we, uh, we just met and fell in love like everybody else with her. So um, grateful for, for Mary to um, be in our lives. It is said that before entering the sea, a river trembles with fear. She looks back at the path she has traveled from the peaks of the mountains and the long winding road crossing forests and villages. And in front of her, she sees an ocean so vast that to enter there seems nothing more than a, to disappear forever. But there is no other way. The river cannot go back. Nobody can go back. To go back is impossible in existence. The river needs to take the risk for entering the ocean because only then will fear disappear because that's where the river will know it's not about disappearing into the ocean, but becoming the ocean. Thank you, Lori. Um, I get the honor and privilege of introducing the next speaker. I've changed hats here to my outward bound hat. And um, I'd like to uh, introduce um, 
a man that Mary referred to as her brother, a brother from another mother. Uh, Lorne Tippett is also my mutual friend and colleague uh, from Outward Bound, an organization and a philosophy that had a big impact on us all. Um, and so, Lauren, uh, if you're ready, if you unmute your microphone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right. So uh, I can talk now? Okay, well, I'd just like to thank Moon and Karen for, uh, you know, being part of this gathering, as well as Mary's support team, Mary's family, and all those who have contributed to um, Mary and just before she departed, she we had this conversation how how fortunate she was to have all these people in her life. Mary and I met back in 1976, 77, 78, somewhere in there, um, via through a program called Project Canoe. Um, one of the things that Mary sort of uh, realized back then about that sense of community was, um, what do these kids do? In, in the off season. And so Mary developed this proposal to start a program called SHARE. And that was to help these kids continue their journey in the off season. I was still in high school at the time, but I was such a keener. I said, well, you know, how can I take part in this? And so um, basically, uh, you know, try to go on as many uh, of the trips that they did as possible. One of the trips that uh, we did, Mary and I, was in a golf and park, and it had been raining for weeks. And when we got there, it was like back in those days, it was like, you know, cooking over fires and stuff like that. And Mary had resigned herself to just eating granola or whatever. And I said, no, no, Mary, we can get this fire going. And, and so, you know, we spent an hour or two and eventually we got it going. And I think um, if anyone read any of Mary's short stories, there's one about... Um, building a fire and that was based on that event. Um, I didn't think I was going to do this. <laughs> All right, I'll try to continue here. Okay. Um. Sorry about that. Um, Mary uh, went traveling and uh, I would receive, uh, I'm so sorry. Lauren, would you like us to uh, come back in a few minutes? Yeah, I think so. Okay, can we do that then? Um, we'll just move on and uh, bring you back. Uh, so Susie, if you can uh, spotlight me here for a second. <laughs> Lauren has is expressing what so many of us are feeling, I think. <laughs> anyway, um, so the, uh, the next slideshow and collection of pictures uh, comes from Mary's uh, activism, uh, I think of. Um, and at her recent, um, her birthday party, uh, her sister Jo told a story that illustrated the fact that Mary lived 
uh, by a moral compass that began in childhood. And it was actually a pretty funny story, but it was oh so true. Her needle always pointed to justice. And in her work and in her life, it was seamless. Um, Mary's wanting always to make the world a better place. And she found allies and friends to help her all along the way, some of whom are here today. And so uh, if we can have the next slide show, please. Thank you. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the love that we seek. We are the seeds we are sowing. We are the harvest we reap. Yes, we are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the love that we seek. We are the seeds we are sowing. Yes, we are the harvest we reap. Oh, I am that I am. 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 We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the love that we seek. We are the seeds we've been sowing. We are the harvest we'll reap. Yes, we are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the love that we seek. And we are the seeds we've been sowing. And we are the harvest we'll reap. We are the harvest we'll reap. Yes, we are the harvest we'll reap. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> um, Lauren's back. If, uh, if you're ready to go, my friend. Uh, if you'll have to un unmute your microphone. How's that? That's awesome. All right. Okay, well, Mary and I met back in 77, 78 uh, with Project Canoe, Project Share that she developed. And uh, again, uh, the uh, Algonquin Park was at uh, rainy weekend and the story that she wrote about how to start a fire in the wilderness. And that was kind of based on our experience together at that time. Mary went off traveling um, over the next couple of years and uh, hopping freight trains and she would write me letters on different pieces of material and I'd get it in the mail and quite excited to, you know, share her adventures with her and what she's up to. She wrote one letter about this special place that she landed in Northern Ontario called Outward Bound and Outward Bound meaning sort of when a ship leaves a safety of harbour and goes out to sea and Mary said, this is a really special place, Lauren. Uh, I think, you know, I think you should come up here. I think you would love it. I think you would fit in. There's this sense of community that was being developed and she just really spoke really highly about it. And so Mary had connections as Mary always does. And she introduced me to Wendy Pay and we had an interview and sure enough, I was uh, accepted into the program. Um, and during, I think it was 1980, Mary went on a all women's staff training course on the Mississippi River. And the Mississippi River is um, not your typical easy sort of river. It was quite the adventure. And during that program, it was really important for Mary, the fact that it was an all women's course. And there was um, women like Moon and Juliet and Wendy Pay and Amanda and Sienna and a few others. Um, Mary spoke about the profound experience that she had on that trip. Um, uh, the fact that it was all women, um, it was very empowering for her. 
she felt a strong connection to women at that time and sort of finding her voice and recognizing her own strengths. And um, I think that sort of uh, had a, uh, like Our Bound for many of us, had a real profound effect on our lives uh, in the future. Late that summer, Mary um, pulled me aside one day and she said, you know, I'd like to get together tonight and I have some news I want to share with you. And, you know, first off, I'm thinking is like, oh, geez, this is a health related thing. Like what's going on? And that night, um, Mary's giving me a massage and she's telling me this and that. And then she said, you know, I wanted to let you know that I'm gay. And uh, I said, oh, I knew that, Mary. And she, we both sort of laughed and it was this sort of, you know, like, how did you know? And it's like, well, Mary, like, you know, I could just sort of see in you with how you are around women and stuff. And I think for Mary, it was just that needing acceptance from me, um, and which wasn't hard to do. Um, the, the other things about Mary is uh, in our relationship, there was that sense about our creating our sense of family. I didn't really have much of a family in those days. And so I think Mary and I, we became like brothers and sisters over the years. And uh, how that relationship sort of developed, it was basically doing fun activities together, um, sharing adventures in the woods. Uh, we played a lot of games. We made meals. We played music into the wee hours. Um, we laughed a lot. We told a lot of stories. Um, and I think over the years, we, you know, stayed in contact and, you know, basically shared you know, what we're doing and uh, our creativeness and stuff like that. And I think um, for me, Mary played a major role in, uh, she was like, she was like my big sister. She looked out for me. Um, and I, I, you know, I, I think for the rest of my life, I will draw on that experience about my relationship with Mary. So thank you for listening. Thank you, Lauren. Yes. Thank you so much, Lauren. And as someone said in the chat too, thank you for your emotion. I think you expressed what a lot of us are feeling. I'd like to invite our next speaker, um, Ellen Heiken, who's in Jerusalem, Israel, who has been a longtime dear friend of Mary's. So Ellen, if you would unmute. Okay, I think I unmuted. Okay. Okay, hi, I'm Ellen from Jerusalem. Uh, I met Mary when we went uh, to a walk for peace in Winnipeg in 1989. We were introduced and just kept on walking hand in hand through life. Anat joined our walk a few years later. She's in another window. Uh, and Mary became our honorary wife, as we joked. But we actually meant it. I loved her dearly, and we each learned from each other. About how, uh -oh, about how to live according to our beliefs and dreams. My life has been impacted by Mary in so many ways. <clears throat> okay. Mary taught us to reuse paper, as I mentioned before, back in the 90s, and recently about the need to grow our own vegetables on our roof, which I've started. In between, there's so much we taught each other, about love, health, separation, coping uh, with the death of loved ones, and of course about coping with her own illness <clears throat> and death. She continues to inspire me and always will. Because of her, I find that I do things that it would be so much easier to just ignore, that I have to stop and pay attention and act. <laughs> And I miss her very much. We talked about this celebration of life, and she wanted me to tell a story that would reflect not only her, but also me and our relationship. When she visited us in Israel, she was always curious to hear our descriptions and explanations about what's going on here. On one of her earlier visits, we were looking out at the old city of Jerusalem, she remembers, and I actually don't, but she told me this story, and this is the story that, uh, one of the stories she wanted me to tell, <laughs> that she was going on and on against the settlers until I called her on her ignorance, in her words, uh, and filled her in on the way the Jewish Israeli settlers see the occupation so that she could have a fuller perspective on the situation. 
She learned that the Jewish settlers see Palestine as part of the biblical lands and that there is something important to them that they have to give up, the land. It helped her to know that because the word land resonates also in Canadian politics. But of course, in the end, it couldn't change um, not her view and not my view about the occupation. But she was happy that I called her on her ignorance. Uh, this is again in her words. And what she learned from that interaction and wanted me to stress was that one should be humble when criticizing or sounding an opinion on a matter that isn't fully understood at least until one gets a fuller perspective. We had a great visit with her and Karen in 2007. Mary loved sending gifts. Oh yeah, this is one of the hats that she sent us. <laughs> so among books and pajamas and earphones, anything she thought that we needed, we accumulated Christmas tree decorations, which we used that Christmas. We all drank and ate and danced and had a very merry Christmas, as we say, and then spent a few days with more partying, partying down in Sinai, Egypt for New Year's. Uh, Mary was in her bathing suit soaking up the sun, and the rest of us were fully dressed because of, it was winter, it was December. Um, one minute. She brought us uh, a kite, and she taught Anat and I and a group of Bedouin children, how to fly it, us being city girls. <laughs> she was such a woman of the heart, naturally blending in a respectful way into different cultures, asking questions, gesturing, smiling, and laughing. <clears throat> Mary spoke to me about how losing her mother at the age of two affected her choices, her life, her need to find a place where she belongs, of the human need to have a place where one belongs. I think um, that her having a chance to meet my family and get to know me gave her insights, insights into what she needed. She listened to her inner self, her needs, and respected them and tried to act. It wasn't easy, but through honest conversations, she got closer to understanding herself over the years understanding the impact of her loss and respecting how she coped with it. She created a home for herself in Powell River and found the people that became like family to her. She learned to take care of herself. And I cannot describe how grateful I am to the people of Powell River that were with Mary throughout the last few years. You were amazing. And both Anat and I Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Uh, throughout the many years of her cancer, our plan was that I would be there with her, holding her as she leaves us. A plan in place that couldn't be fulfilled because of a pandemic of all things. I was so relieved to know that Leah, her much loved cousin, could be with her for her last days and hold her in her last moments. I knew Mary was surrounded by love, and most important, Mary knew it. And I thank you all so much, people of Powell River, Karen, Moon, and everybody that's been in her life. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and thank you, Ellen. That was very moving and very evocative of Mary. I'd like to now invite our next reader, Nancy Lee. Um, Nancy is in Halifax, Nova Scotia, a longtime friend of Mary's and a beloved colleague. So Nancy, if you would unmute. Hi everyone. I'm still, uh, uh, yeah, I'm still so moved by your words, Ellen. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna read a couple of poems for Mary. Um, one that she picked out, uh, and one that I wrote for her. Um, I met Mary in the late 90s at uh, a Microenterprise Development Institute. Uh, uh, Bill Maddox is here with us too. And uh, we had dinner that night and just uh, talked all night and, and have been dear friends ever since. I love that there are so many nude photos of Mary that she just just like a little kid you know just loved to be nude and my 
my my my fondest memory of her is I just was out to see her a few years ago uh, in Powell River and uh, just skinny dipping. She took me to this quiet little inlet. Um, I'm going to try to hold it together. <laughs> um, Mary, Mary, for me, was you talked about a moral compass, and for me, Mary was a a bit of a compass for divine feminine. You know, we used to talk about just bringing it to that level when uh, when we were struggling and we both worked around economic security for women and and I, I also just really want to express my gratitude to all of you in Powell River and the loving way that you held her death. Um, anyway, this is a this is a this is one that I wrote for her, Mary. <laughs> I realized early on that I would have to feel less sorry for myself if I was to journey alongside you who hold death as you hold life straight on with your beautiful fire, a bare knuckled grace, leaning in, asking us to live and love you, to leave the medical questions for candlelight and shared meals, conversations about travels and feminism and lesbian light, human hikes in the woods. You've taught me how to love when I'm scared like a revolution, like the deserts, the rivers, the shelters, the wide smiles of Guatemalan, Guatemalan children in your calendars, your loving calendars. You taught me how to witness, how to fight and spit and swallow and be a little lost yet keep the faith in divine feminine. You taught me how to surrender with grace and hold the lo long quivering sacred Llorona, hermana de alma, mentor and friend. You've taught me how to love with my soul, reminded me that we're energies and I knew, I knew you long before we met and we'll be with you long after our energies. We're energy, we're love, soul sisters, your grace in me, in you, with you, in you, in me, we're eternal. And this one is Mary Oliver, who needs no introduction <laughs> and is the perfect choice for divine feminine. And this one's called Don't Hesitate. If you suddenly and unexpectedly feel joy, don't hesitate, give into it. There are plenty of lives and whole towns destroyed or about to be. We're not wise and not very often kind and much can never be redeemed. Still, life has some possibility left. Perhaps this is its way of fighting back, that sometimes something happens better than all the riches or power in the world. It could be anything, but very likely you notice it in the instant when love begins. Anyway, that's often the case. Anyway, whatever it is, don't be afraid of its plenty. Joy is not made to be a crumb. Thank you all. Thank you, Mary. Moon, Karen, love to you all. Oh, Nancy, thank you so much. And thank you for that beautiful poem. I hope that you can share a copy with me and we can add it to this um, or I'll send it out on the email list because that was so touching. Thank you. And now I would like to invite Oscar Murga to speak. Oscar is in Guatemala City, Guatemala. He is a longtime friend of Mary's, who she called her brother. And I'm so glad to have him here with us. Oscar, you'll need to unmute yourself, um, click on the microphone, and then you can go ahead and speak. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Moon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Nancy, for me. Sorry. I promised myself that I will not going to do this. Mm. <laughs> uh, but thank you, Nancy. Your 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 poem was so so true for our beloved sister. Uh, okay. 
Thank you all for being here in celebration of our dearest um, sister, friend, companion, partner. We can say a lot of a lot of things, uh, and all of them good about our dearest Mary. Um, I have the privilege and blessing of sharing with her uh, uh, nearly 30, 30 something years of my life. And we were also privileged and shared that um, we have been able to open our hearts to something that continues to be in here with us, uh, her true presence. Um, it's something that I really um, cherish and, and it's so wonderful to feel it. And getting to know that uh, after all uh, her path in suffering and, and growing and, and giving and sharing and loving, uh, she will be always be with us, within us. It it's, will be probably her most precious gift. Um, but I just want to share a little, <laughs> a little something that we had um, a few years back. In 2018, uh, we've been uh, blessed to get together in Tuxtla Gutierrez, Chiapas, in the middle, let's say, in the middle of our path to 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 be together and at that at that time <laughs> mary have already quit um, her medical traditional uh treatment because as you all know uh chemo has been paying her toll and it was very hard for her and 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 uh, she had uh, quit that, and uh, it, she was in, in, in this holistic uh, meditative treatment that worked so well for her. That's another gift from her to all of us. Um, and um, well, we, we were have the, the chance to get together personally in, in Tuxla and um, and there is something else that we also shared very much and very deeply is that um, um, if we want to see the change that we need and want in this world, we need to educate girls everywhere, all over the world. Girls should be educated if, if we want to see the change that is needed in this, in this, in these times. And um, we also <laughs> we also share a, a, a passion for reading, and she had gave me as a, a gift a, a book that is called uh, "One Cup of Tea at a Time" that tells the story of a guy, an American guy that was uh, opening schools for Muslim girls in in Afghanistan. Uh, in which seems, well, you know, the right thing and the most challenging thing to do in this culture. And, and um, well, Mary can put more details on it. But the fact is that when we get together with Mary in Tuxla, I have uh, recently received <laughs> the, the news that the author of, of this book and the guy that it's the... the the, the main character in, in it uh, happens uh, to be in the files of WikiLeaks, um, exposed as the 
<laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. Exposed as a CI agent that it's uh, collecting, it's, it's in charge of black ops, uh, uh, collecting um, cannabis uh, gym pool for the now legal market of of, of cannabis in in the in the U.S. and and uh, I was a rage, you know, because uh, Mary had uh, this guy also create a foundation to maintain these schools for girls in Afghanistan, and and Mary had told me that he she had already uh, make a donation uh, for for this foundation and so and I was like, oh Mary, you know. It was so terrible to know that uh, he he uses this so well wonderful and and so important uh, goal to to make all this damn thing and, and and she was like, well you know this is something that we will never need to forget also is this Mary's wit. Well you know don't be mad. Um, because she was taking THC extracts for her cancer. And, and she told me uh, having the, the bottle of the drops, you know, well, you know, it's not so bad at all because now I can, I can have the good stuff for my treatment. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was so, it was uh, at the end, well, we, laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh because as we said in Spanish and I hope that the translator has done no trouble in translating this but in Spanish we say that nadie sabe para quien trabaja and uh, we were talking about that and but you know it's um it's something that really she gave us all I think and it's how to see the good things out of something that could be really bad. And <clears throat> at the end, I think that that is one of other, the other. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Carmen. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Uh, thank you. Uh, you know, to learn to laugh about things that could be um, outrageous. It's something that I think that we need to learn and that Mary show us how. Uh, I really I really have thousands of anecdotes like this one and in all those years and Karen would not let me lie, but uh, uh, with Karen, for example, we, we were blessed and, and privileged to having a uh, whole 10 days of wonderful times together here in Guatemala, in the highlands, in the beach, and um, holidays, and uh, knowing each other, learning how to live with ourselves and 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 be very happy about it and be brave enough as Mary has always been to say things as they are. Um, I, I think that I can, I can go on and on and on. Um, and I can tell, well, as I said before, thousands of good things and good experiences that we share with, with Mary um, and how she taught me how to grow, how to learn, how to open my heart to, to communities all over the world, how to embrace other cultures and, and, and learn about them and, and, and feel really, really good with myself for, for who I, I am. Um, I would say, I will always now will miss her physical presence, 
but you're here. My dear sis, my dear sis, you're here. You will always be here. And we are going to get together again. That is something that she assured me uh, when we say goodbye in our last our last uh, meeting th through Zoom. And I really believe that we are going to get together again with our hearts open to grow, to be brave, to be witty, <laughs> and to enjoy our mutual presence. So, um, I love you, Mary. I will never... <sighs> Sorry. You are here. You are here with all of us, and that's the most important part. So let's continue to celebrate her life. She deserved it. Thank you. Gracias, Oscar. Gracias, Karen. <laughs> oh, um, and now we're, um, I'm going to introduce uh, Kim Morgan. And uh, Kim is going to do a reading. Kim is uh, Mary's younger sister. Love the hat, Kim. <laughs> Looks great. Um, and uh, Kim, I understand you currently live in Kelowna, BC. Um, and you're there with your sister, Jo. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, so you've unmuted your microphone. I'll turn it over to you. Hi. As uh, Lynn said, I'm Mary's baby sister, and she called me Kimbo, <laughs> so you can call me Kimbo. So I'm just going to read a poem by <clears throat> Marge Piercy. The people I love the best jump into work head first, without dallying in the shallows, and swim off with sure strokes almost out of sight. They seem to become natives of that element, the black sleek heads of seals bouncing like half submerged balls. I love people who harness themselves, an ox to a heavy cart who pull like water buffalo with massive patience, who strain in the mud and the muck to move things forward, who do what has to be done again and again. I want to be with the people who submerge in the task, who go into the fields to harvest and work in a row and pass the bags along, who are not parlor generals and field deserters, but move in a common rhythm when the food must come in or the fire be put out. The work of the world is common as mud, botched, it smears the hands, crumbles to dust. But the thing worth doing well done has a shape that satisfies, clean and evident. Greek amphoras for wine or oil, Hopi vases that held corn are put in museums, but you know they were made to be used. The pitcher cries for water to carry and a person for work that is real. So proud of my big sister. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. Thanks so much. I'd like to invite our next speaker. Our next speaker is Isabel Choshan Quinoise. I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce that properly. Isabel will be speaking in Spanish. So this means for those of you who don't know Spanish, you need to go down to the toolbar on your screen to you'll see an interpretation and click on the English channel, so we'll hear the interpreter um, conveying Isabel's message. Isabel, please unmute and go ahead. Buenas tardes. Desde Guatemala. En primer lugar.
quiero enviar un abrazo de agradecimiento a ese grupo que acompañó a María en la etapa de la trascendencia. ¿Cuánto hubiera querido estar cerca de ella? Tomarle las manos y decirle, ven en paz, amiga y hermana de toda la vida. And my, uh, my sister of all my life. Uh, time is going by and I can't believe that I'm not with her, but I have her in my heart. When I was with my children, she came to visit us and she asked me to speak about a trip that we did in, in 1990. Uh, she was a member of the International Peace Brigade and uh, that experience that we had in a trip to Wilco in a place called Santa Cruz Varias. We went with the idea to have an adventure and, and to see what was the reality, economic and social reality of those communities that had had so much injustice among them uh, due to the armed conflict in Guatemala. We, we, we traveled with two other um, colleagues, they are seeing the transmission. They're not here, but they're seeing the transmission from their home. Uh, they loved her very much. From, from that trip, I have so many sweet memories of Maria. Because in our adventure, we got to a greater uh, sensibility social sensibility of what was happening. We were walking in a lot of mud and we saw a lot of people that were escaping from the army. They were heading towards Mexico. We were walking and we were talking about the reality, talking about how these peoples could survive among so much poverty. We threw through a lot of uh, patrols of uh, civilian defense. And we had, and Maria was tall, she was, uh, she was blonde, and we were, we were saying that we were Girl Scouts. We're, we're members of the Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts. We met a little boy. Uh, I don't know if you. What I can I can say is that we spoke to so many about so many personal things that helped us. To know it. And we said that they would, we would never leave this road to helping people that need it. At that time, when she was in the brigades, uh, I was a member of, a, of a, an organization that was looking for people that had disappeared. But Maria, uh, among the, what we felt, the pain that we felt of people that had disappeared, she would call us to live a little bit more, even though she was of our same age. She did not know to, exactly what the situation was here. Among all the um, 
jokes. We create, we create an, an, an association that we said that we were nuns, little nuns. And when she left, we finally we got a name and we were the bandidas, the bed. We, we made a, a letter that the Pope authorized us. She was, she was, she was the sister called uh, white nose because the problem is her nose was peeling. She would, she would put a lot of cream so she would that her nose. Uh, another of the colleagues, we, uh, her colleagues, we called her a member, member month because she fell into the public paper. Another colleague that had some shoes that fell apart when we were walking. And the little boy that, that, uh, that we met. Uh, and I was also Sister Mule. And she was also Sister uh, White Nose. It looked like a nonsense and, and, and something from children. But these are some of the, mem the, the memories, the real nice memories of the purity of the heart and, and how noble Maria was. Her human rich and her capacity to adapt herself. We came back. That was quite an adventure. We were quite tired. There were more than 32 kilometers that we were, that we walked. And, and we fell asleep and the bus left at five in the morning. There was only one bus. And, and the bus left us. We, we just, we couldn't wake up. And we left that place in a pickup that was full of chickens. When we arrived to Denango, we found a bus that left. And she ran to see if, if we can get back the money of the trip that we took. And he said, no, Maria, don't do that. But she was very upset because we didn't support her in re requesting the money back. I don't, I don't understand why Guatemalans take everything and you don't ex exercise your rights. I said, no, Maria, let's just go. Up, up to this point, I, I still think about that adventure in Maria's life, but she remember this, she remember this adventure with a lot of happiness. And we lived for some days uh, a hostile environment that we were living in the capital city. And she left. And the other trip that I have in my heart is when we met in San Cristóbal Las Casas. I could not see Oscar, he had left. This is one of the conversations that I will never forget. I did not want her to suffer, so I celebrate her leaving us. And I, can't forget that. I can't forget that. I, I still have her face in my WhatsApp, and it's difficult for me to accept this. this Maria taught me many, many things about life. She, she was confident and absolute confident. 
and I went missing. She was one of the women that I could totally trust. Totally trust. Maria, even when she was sick, she helped a lot of people, even, even myself. Yes. And I don't have much to say, but uh, life gave me that richness of that, of that friendship. Nobody can take that away. And uh, she took part of my heart. I remember her laughing. She was a, a very good friend of my mother. Um, and she said she was going to be with my mother. She met her. And I don't know anything more to say. But thank you. Thank you to all that group who supported her. And that you still have her in your memory. Thank you. And a big fraternal hug to all of you. And uh, it was a it was a treat to talk, even though it was this way. Thank you. Gracias, Isabel. Gracias. So um, thank you, uh, gracias, Isabel. We're going to go into uh, another slideshow, and uh, this one is, um, it's about Mary as a leader and her work, her work in the world, and we just had some beautiful poetry about that. Um, so I think Mary, we're getting a very clear picture for those of you that, um, you know, may not have been part of her work life, um, that she was a consummate facilitator, an educator, and um, she was a leader, um, and she was a builder of leadership in communities, um, and she fully believed in the power of collective action, and she, her faith, she had a faith that wasn't Christianity, made that very clear, but her faith was in community and in people. Um, and she believed in justice and equity for peace and right relations. And uh, for me, in my memory, always with a joyful heart and a, a good dose of playfulness and uh, humor. So um, if we can move to the next slide, show please. Isabel, solo quiero recordarte que hay una opción de interpretación abajo en la pantalla para que puedas escuchar el resto eh, aquí en español. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Don't give up hope. You're not alone. Don't you give up, keep moving on. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Lift up your eyes. Don't you despair. Look up ahead. The path is there. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put 
One foot in front of the other and lead with love. Yeah. Oh, so, so wonderful to see these images of Mary and to remember the incredible contributions she's made to making a better world. I'd like to now invite our next speaker um, to share memories of, of Mary. This is Nikika Baish, and I'm sorry if I didn't say that right. He's coming to us from Bosnia, and he and Mary work together in Bosnia. So Nick, if you would unmute and go ahead, please. Okay. Hi to everybody. Uh, <clears throat> I met Mary some 20 years uh, ago. 32 years ago, when she came to Bosnia to work as program director at Sphere International Economic Development Project, it's uh, located, located here in Banja Luka. So, formerly she was my supervisor, but finally she became my chief sister and really honest friend. Our first contact was somehow filled with suspicion, especially for my side. But after the, br the brief in introduction and exchange of basic information, she asked me very directly what I expected from the project that I implemented and then from her personally. I realized that she is the right person and that she is a good uh, educator. And I said to her that I need some strong mentoring and fine tuning by some international experts as she was. She was completely, it was, uh, she was completely satisfied with that answer and we started with some incredible long work, friendship, and relation. Here in Banja Luka, we have a strong culture of solving all kinds of business problems, challenges uh, in local cafe bars. Mary accepted this custom, and we often use every opportunity to go to cafe bars and have meetings there with staff, with uh, partners, with uh, donors, <clears throat> with a lot of beers and cigarettes. Her comment was that she loved this type of meetings because they were efficient and creative, but it was an extremely harmful habit after which she could not sleep because of the, of the strong smoke and the alcohol. In a very short period of time in Bosnia, very spotted the weaknesses and shortcomings of, of Bosnian education system, which provide broad knowledge, but was not focused on solving challenges or setting up yeah, thank you. For that, Thanks. Sorry. For that reason, she developed a teaming project for various categories uh, from a theater group to professional consultants. She showed that training could be done anytime and anywhere. On one occasion, we organized, organized training on the former front line in Halfa, a ruined hotel that had only one full room, but no, uh, but no glass on the windows. The only protection against the cold was plastic foil from UNHCR, and as heating we used squeezes. The training was rated excellent by four participants as an amazing and an as amazing experience. Here in international practices, uh, practices annual training meetings in, in, in fancy hotels here in Boston. But Mary changed that and it used the practice of going to Etno Resort where we made plans and defined projects with campfires and barbecue. They were so, uh, that was so good that all donors approved that and financed it. In addition to numerous qualities, Mary also had one characteristic that I personally adored and that was her ability, and that was her ability to elaborate an entire, the entire story and program on the basis of very little information. On one occasion, we talked, we talked to DFID representative here in Bosnia, who was supposed to finance one of our project proposals. Nick, so, Nick, excuse yes? me. Can you speak a little bit slower because we're having it interpreted into Spanish? Okay, and yes, can, yes. You, can you get a little bit closer to your microphone because it's a bit quiet? Thank you. Okay, thanks. sorry for that. Uh, okay. Uh, I will repeat this last, uh, the last few words, uh, sentence. Uh, on one occasion, we talked to DFID representative here in Bosnia, who was supposed to finance one of our project proposals. 
the man was uh, incredibly conceited. Mary asked him what they were doing and in what way. The man started to explain quite conf confusedly. And after a few minutes, Mary took the main word and started explaining what they were doing, in what way, what their goals were, and how uh, and how they will reach them. The highlight is the fact that men started writing down her words, saying that that was exactly what they are, what what they, what they were doing, but uh, that neither he nor his colleagues had said it so clearly and structurally. Uh, from the beginning of our, our relationship, Mary was direct and my really she became a really good friend uh, even some five years ago when I was in when I had some personal tragedy she was already sick she called my wife and she asked it okay let's organize some international gathering to, to help me said no there is no need to make some kind of noise or, or just show it how she was and okay Mary thank you for everything I try to turn off my, my emotions but okay th thanks you guys Mary thank you for everything Thank you so much Nick it's it's really good to meet you I've I heard Mary speak of you often well, thank you. And I'd like now to uh, invite our next reader, who is Joe Dakin. Joe is in Kelowna with her sister Kim, and Joe is Mary's younger sister. Not the youngest, but the younger <laughs> sister. So, Joe, if you can unmute, go ahead. Thanks, Karen. Um, yeah, actually, Mary and I are, are just um, one. Uh, Got to get my act together here. Hold on. <laughs> Mary and I um, were one week or one year and three weeks apart. So she was my big sister, and um, we shared a bedroom for 17 years until she decided that it was time for her to go out and conquer the world. Um, certainly, she was a warrior to us that stayed home and of her travels and her journeys. Um, she's met all of you and bought, um, you've all brought um, such experiences to her life. And uh, Kimmy and I were very grateful for what you've done for her. Uh, I didn't think I would cry, but that's not that's not happening. <laughs> okay so i am reading a poem for for mary and it's i know the mountains because of i i have stood on precipice and breathed i know prairie because i have lain on my back and been absorbed by the sky i know the ocean because i've immersed myself in it and felt the pull of the current of its current if i wanted to know life I need to experience its wonder and breathe it with every breath. If I wanted to know possibility, I need to see its immensity and allow it to absorb me. If I wanted to know faith, I need to surrender to it and feel it pulling me in an unseen direction. So thank you all for everything that you've done for Mary and um, certainly for us all too. of us yeah. <laughs> we we really are grateful I'm very grateful thank you thanks joe thank you so much um love the hats gotta say <laughs> um so our next i'd like to invite our next speaker our next speaker is eva morales i'm not sure if she's in guatemala right now or if she's at her home in the washington dc area um, and Eva, we're having some trouble uh, finding you in the gallery view. So if you can unmute yourself and start speaking, if you're if you're here, I know you were on earlier, but I we're having trouble finding you right now. Eva. No, so well, that's 
That's unfortunate because I know she was on earlier and we've been having some email exchanges to get her on. So yeah, I'm sorry about that. I think we should then move on. Moon? You're muted, Moon. <laughs> Unmute, Moon. Unmute me. Don't say that very often. Anyway, um, it's it's complicated having people coming in from different parts of the globe. Um, so hopefully Eva will come, Eva will come back on. Um, and I am going to introduce um, Leah Allen. And um, um, Leah is Mary's second cousin from Winnipeg, now living in North Carolina, Durham, North Carolina. Um, and although a second cousin, Mary considered her more of a niece. Um, and Leah was also part of Mary's care team um, in her dying. And uh, so we're very grateful to have you here. And uh, Leah is going to give another reading. Again, these readings are selections that Mary particularly chose. So Leah, please unmute yourself. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Moon. Um, yeah, Mary um, was my mother's cousin, but I called her my aunt, and I was um, really proud that she called me her niece. She, she was uh, part of my family of origin and my chosen family, which is really special. And I want everyone to know, um, along with the rest of her dying team, I was with her when she passed, and it was very peaceful and Mary was very happy and I want everyone here to know that it was it was beautiful. I'm going to read a poem that Mary chose um, that I read at her graveside uh, during her, her funeral and I want to invite everyone who's able or willing to close their eyes and imagine a beautiful um, green grassy field and a grove of tall Powell River trees, um, which is where we were um, while I read the poem, which is titled Love of the World, and it's by Charlotte Tall Mountain. For the love of a tree, she went out on a limb. For the love of the sea, she rocked the boat. For the love of the earth, she dug deeper. For the love of community, she mended fences. For the love of the stars, she let her light shine. For the love of spirit, she nurtured her soul. For the love of a good time, she sowed seeds of happiness. For the love of God, she drew down the moon. For the love of nature, she made compost. For the love of a good meal, she gave thanks. For the love of family, she reconciled differences. For the love of creativity, she entertained new possibilities. For the love of her enemies, she suspended judgment. For the love of herself, she acknowledged her own worth and the world was richer for her. Thank you. Thank you, Leah. Thank you so much. Oh, and thank you everyone for what you've shared today, for the emotion, for the memories of our wonderful Mary, Maria, Maruka, Mayor Bear. Um, yeah, I, I wanted to mention, Mary did ask if, um, if people were inclined to make donations, um, that she asked that they be made to the Kalanish Society, which is an organization that offers retreats for people with cancer. And Mary attended one of those retreats for five days and found it incredibly healing. Plus, she also had ongoing conversations with the head of Kalanish. 
Um, we've come to the, um, the end of the formal part of the program. And um, we're grateful for all who have spoken and contributed to this. I'd like to thank Susie Henderson and Carolina Bandagna in Toronto who have done all of the tech work uh, and helped with translation. And of course, Carmen, who has been our translator today. Um, now, before I close out with a little song, I just want to um, invite you, if you wish, to stick around and uh, if you want to visit with folks that are here. Y'all have been so pleasant uh, about muting, or maybe you haven't been pleasant about muting, but it's not easy to sit still when you want to say something. So an opportunity to chat, uh, and Susie can help with the breakout rooms. There are a number of categories, and if you don't like one of the categories, you can create another category or invite some people. Um, and if you have problems, just ask Susie in the chat box. Um, and um, Yes, and but if you choose to leave, we thank you so much for being present um, from our hearts. Um, this has been a, a very powerful experience for both Karen and I uh, to be able to collaborate on this and fulfill our promise to Mary to have a memorial. Um, so thank you for that. And if you are leaving, you know, good journeys to you um, with Mary, Mary over your shoulder and uh, hopefully uh, some of you can stay and chat. So um, also this is recorded and it will be available to watch later. Um, and I was, um, I'm going to sing a song, Mary didn't ask for this. So I'm taking an executive decision and it's a song called Homeward Now. Homeward now shall I journey Homeward upon the rainbow, Homeward now shall I journey, Homeward upon the rainbow, To life unending and beyond it, yea, Homeward now shall I journey, To joy unchanging and beyond it, yea, Homeward now shall I journey, Homeward now shall I journey, Homeward upon the rainbow, Homeward now shall I journey, Homeward upon the rainbow. So, um, folks that wish to uh, visit, um, if you want to take a look in a breakout room, I can see that a lot of people have already hopped in, so enjoy. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone, for being here. And we'll see you again down the road. <laughs>